Hi guys, uh, Mark Zito from SiriusXM. Uh, the question I wanted to ask was, obviously tons of submissions this year, things like that. How has technology and social media changed the way the festival runs since the beginning? Have you gotten an influx because of that? And furthermore, with video on demand and Netflix, has distribution changed the types of films that you get? I think technology's at, probably changed the number of films we've had because so it's something that's everyone's fingertips. Everybody can be a filmmaker now. Um, I've also seen the quality go up, actually to your question as well. Uh, the, the quality of filmmaking, I think, has grown over the years. So I think we're in a really good place for, for artistic expression using film. Everything's at your fingertips, so your kind of imagination is your, own, uh, is your own drawback, really. So if you can get past your own imagination and create something wonderful, we're there for you. But do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I would say the other, I mean, certainly in terms of the experience yeah. of the festival, um, we're we're working very heavily with a lot of uh, a lot of social media and live streams and and trying to find ways of bringing the festival to people who can't be here on the mountains. So um, that's one way I think that that it's changed the festival experience. Um, and then on distribution, um, I do think uh, we're going to see a continued trend, and we've already seen it. Um, and and at, at the institute, we're working really hard to support it in people being very entrepreneurial and actually very independent throughout the whole pipeline of the distribution of their project as they are um, in making it. Not all of them, some of them want to go a conventional route, but I think um, we have a whole program at the Institute now called Artist Services that, is, um, that has been built to support filmmakers who are using new technologies to get their films to audiences in innovative ways. And uh, we see it exploding in our community, so yeah. But the audiences are in charge now. Absolutely. And over here. We've been live streaming the uh, press conference, and we've got a uh, go. question from Twitter. We heard that Sundance is coming to Brooklyn. Is this true? No, I, uh, I can, yeah, I can answer that. that. <laughs> um, it tells you a little bit how, how the media has changed. Um, <laughs> it, there's no truth to it. Uh, when, the, when we were told by the people that were going to put the article out, uh, and we told them that, uh, no, there's no truth to it, they said, well, we're going to run with it anyway. So that's what you got. And, and so unfortunately, that seems to be, depending on the, on the kind of media it is, uh, you're just going to get that. You have to live with that. That's just uh, the way it is these days, which is also part of why some people don't quite trust the media the way they should or used to. But there's no truth to it. Uh, we've been involved with BAM for, for many, many years. We brought programs there. Um, we brought programs here. We have a, a relationship with them, IFP, Kerry can talk about. But there is no truth to what you heard. Brooklyn, no. London, yes. But you need to know. It, it, it does speak to the notion that if it's not happening in New York, it's not happening, which, uh, which I hope that this sort of puts the lie to. Well, I think part of the starting <laughs> it here was one, yeah. one step, you know, starting it in Utah, which in the early days when this first came up, I, there was a lot of questions about that. Mm -hmm. What? You know, and so why not? And maybe if you do something that builds, maybe you do something that connects and it grows, uh, you can create another, another experience in another part of America. Mm -hmm. uh, John McKenna from CHCH TV. Um, when the NRA put part of the blame for the Newtown Massacre on Hollywood. I was wondering, what was going through your mind? Wh whose mind? Yours. Robert. Robert. Let's start, let's start with you. <laughs> they, don't care, they don't care what I have to say. <laughs> well, uh, um, well, I'll, I'll, we can speak I'll, for ourselves. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, I speak for myself. I feel like it's, it's, a, um, it's good that the dialogue about, about gun control is happening on a national level right now. I don't think, um, I don't have anything to add to that, really, except to say I think uh, we all feel it's good it's being discussed and everything needs to be looked at. Mine went through a documentary in the festival, Valentine Road, and you almost have to see that as, a, as, as another piece of this story. And that's what, because we were right in the middle of programming when this happened, and, and I, I, I actually thought about that documentary and how, how it changed what that documentary was going to mean to the people seeing it for the first time here at Sundance. But you had already announced the slate for the festival before Newtown, because that was only a month ago. Right. Um, and, and, but it, 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 did, it does raise something I wanted to ask about was, 
um, the fact that as you are, as you were putting the program together, and there's always talk about political films and films with political messages, when you were putting most of the slate together, we didn't know who was going to be inaugurated next week. That's right, we didn't. Uh, yeah, right. And I wonder how, how, you, how you work to answer for when you don't know what the, you know, what, what the political reality is going to be, how you, how you choose movies that are going to try to speak to a political reality that is still maybe in flux. I don't think I ever really do. It's truth is truth. And I lo I'm looking for the documentaries that just are, are telling a true story and a deeper story. So um, either way, I think they would have played, they might play different to the audience, but to us programming the festival, everything is so much on its own merit, I don't think we ever let it influence us. It's very hard to watch the debates though when you're watching so many films at the same time. Like the election just sort of went by. <laughs> I kind of woke up and it was done. So um, I was almost glad for that. But I have to agree with you about Valentine Road. I, it's one of the it, few it's, I've seen It just has all of a sudden had a new resonance. I, 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 I got it. They, they showed it to me in advance. And it, uh, it, it, the fact that you chose that before Newtown, it, it does resonate even more with and, all the stuff that we've And we chose it because it's an news. amazing movie. It's yeah, it is, so, it is really good. So. OK, who we got? Oh, we got one here. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't. Want, wants to know uh, if you had anything to say about about Hollywood and guns. Well, no, I think what Kerry said, I agree. I, I think there, <clears throat> I'm thinking back when uh, it started Sundance back in 1980, and I remember <clears throat> uh, Reagan was shot at at that, that same year, um, and I remember there was talk about gun control coming up then. Now it's 30 years later, uh, and so I guess, well, I certainly agree with, with Kerry. I think it's absolutely not only appropriate but overdue to have a, a dialogue. And the dialogue is now going on between the parties that it should go on. If I had, there's only one thing that probably I would, in my own industry, and it would be a question. It's not a comment as much as a question. When I was driving along the street the other day in, <clears throat> in Los Angeles and I saw two billboards with, uh, where guns were featured prominently. And uh, th they were so prominent it almost suggested this has to be. One of the billboards just had a, a young couple, very pleasant looking, young, happy looking couple, um, and they both had guns, well dressed well, guns. My thought was, does my industry think that guns will help sell tickets? I don't know, it's not a question that I could answer. But it seems like a question worth asking my own industry, and maybe there's a reason, that maybe yes. I don't know, but it seems fair to because I, I've noticed that um, how often guns are used in ads as though there's something that translates in a positive way. I just don't know, but I think it's worth asking that question. Have one up here. Hi, uh, James Rocky, MSN Movies. Last week, the Sutherland Institute suggested that perhaps Utah should rethink its funding for the festival and have a Sundance festival, quote, may not represent Utah values, end quote. I'm wondering if, A, you can talk about the economic benefits to the area from a festival on the record, and also if you have any ideas about how uh, some Utah values could better reflect Sundance values as well. Well, you know, I, I can tell us, you guys can answer, but, but you know, this has always happened. Um, and it usually, um, sometimes the narrowest mind uh, barks the loudest. And we've, over time, just come to ignore it because you want to remind people, one, um, if, if they'd like us to go away, we'd probably take, what, 70, 80 million dollars with us. 80. Uh, 80 million dollars come to the local economy in 10 days. Pretty good. So we, we bring something to the table. <clears throat> We're also offering a wide spectrum of choices. It's up to the audience to choose. They don't have to see this film or that film. Uh, it's, it's a matter of choice. And so I would just say to these people, um, th we either ignore them or remind them that it's a free country and they should maybe look at the Constitution. <laughs> and uh, as, as the local <coughs> on the panel here, um, Google Sutherland Institute and then stand way back from the computer. Uh, <laughs> last question, right here. Uh, Keith Simonton. Uh, Cooper, I'm curious uh, if there were any like surprising trends out of movies that you saw coming in. Um, you know, like, hey, there's six Lipizzan Stallion films this year, or you know, 
that things that you wouldn't have anticipated? Not um, actually what we were talking about a little earlier, sort of the, the, the complexity of sexual relationships. In a lot of the movies, it was a very prominent sub plot line in a lot of them. I don't know why that is, but um, it was there. I, I like the, the depth that they go to, and I also like that they're both from male and female perspective, a lot of the films. Yeah. I mean, even that 50% that of the films in the competition are made by women. I think that's an interesting... Um, we love that. Is that a trend? I don't I hope so, but I don't... I, you know, I can only hope for that. What we found from the documentaries in particular is very, very immediate and very topical, which a lot of times there's a lot of um, documentarians working more a historical perspective to problems. I found very, the, um, very topical and also willing to look at both sides of the issue. It's almost like until we start looking at both sides of the issues, you're never going to really get anywhere. So let's go deep, let's go both sides, and let the audiences and the people of this country decide how to make, really find solutions for these things that are facing us. So that's kind of what I felt taken away. You know, one thing I, I'd like to toss in here <clears throat> um, that has to do with our beginnings. When I had the idea to start a festival, basically the labs were the first idea to, to create a a mechanism to, to help new filmmakers have a place to develop their skills so that they could maybe get their films made. Then when it was clear that there was no space for them to go, we led to the idea of the festival, <clears throat> the idea of here. The original idea, not knowing what was going to happen, was well, maybe we can create a community of, of filmmakers. They can at least show each other their work, they can talk, they can mail, that's something. And maybe if we're lucky, somebody else might, might come. But as this thing developed, <clears throat> one of the things I was told when I had the idea for the, for the festival was, well, that'll never work. And you want to do it up in Utah, in the mountain? You want to do it in the winter? And I said, well, yeah, make it weird. You know, <laughs> make, it, make it interesting. To, uh, they said, it won't work. Um, why? Because <clears throat> you can't advertise. You can't, you can't hit the commercial button because you can't you don't have trailers, you don't have, you don't have any advertising. I said, well, no, but that's not the point. It's not meant to be commercial, it's meant to be diverse. So diversity is the point, not how we see something as being commercial or not. Uh, I wouldn't go there. Um, my business does very well, the main part of Hollywood business does very well with that. This is about diversity. This is about something that hasn't been done, and the audience will choose. The, the nice thing is that we're still here, and diversity has proven to be commercial, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Um, we got we got to wrap it up. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, hydration and hand sanitizer. Uh, <laughs> stay healthy. Have a fun festival. <laughs> For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitFix on Twitter or visit HitFix.com. <laughs>